OLEV's role is to try and um, facilitate the early market of ultra low emission vehicles and to make sure that we're setting the groundwork for the transition. The task force is really bringing together everything on the energy side. Um, so there's a lot of different work going on, a lot of a lot of stakeholders involved. But what we wanted to do was to set out here are some of the key questions that we've got and some of the key challenges. Um, let's do a bit of work over a year or so, might expand longer but initially over a year or so really looking at what those challenges are um, and starting to bring that expertise together and, and all of the good work that's going on. What we need to do in the task force, what we've been asked to do by government in, in the task force is act in a sense as a convener bringing all of this work together in one place, synthesising it, playing it back to the sector to, to test for consensus and then in an ideal world compiling that into a powerful compelling set of recommendations that are at the one level uh, uh, pointing out to industry and to government the clear no regrets things we have to do now to keep the option open to be able to play into this uh, electrified uh, transport future uh, but also to point out some of the things that we should be looking out for as we prepare ourselves to deal with some of the things that are remaining uncertain uh, uh, in, in, in the future. Well, both the automotive and the energy companies have to take responsibility for electrifying transport. And there's an opportunity there for, for both of them and a challenge there for both of them. The important thing is that until recently, these sectors have not been working closely together. And so one of the key things that the task force has to deliver is to build those bridges between those two communities to even build the, a, a, a common vocabulary to describe and understand these issues and, and plan together. The role of LOCVP is really to build those bridges and, and help coordinate that understanding. We're bringing those people together. We're bringing them together through the, uh, through the task force, um, through the steering groups, and through the, the wider community of organisations that have uh, joined. And to date, we've had something like 90 organisations nominating themselves, volunteering themselves to play a part in those work packages. I believe it's energy system challenge, mainly because, you know, historically people do not interact with their energy. This is, you know, excuse the pun, is the vehicle to be able to bring that discussion home and for people to start to understand that interaction with energy. When you can understand plugging in and, and downloading X kilowatts and it can get me that far, that becomes relatable and to, to, the, to, to every, everybody. Well, yes, one must remember that um, back in the early part of last century, there were probably more electric cars than conventional fossil fuel based cars. And the only reason that the fossil fuel car won was on the basis of the fueling infrastructure, that it became easier to supply those vehicles with fossil fuel than it did to provide them with electricity. And I think that summarises where we are today. Tesla have done a fantastic job of showing that a, a vehicle, electric vehicle, can be quite sexy and perform well, but it is in a moment in a fairly niche kind of high value market. If we're going to achieve mass market rollout, we've got to make those cars far less exp expensive and also sell them to the people who aren't convinced about an electric vehicle or don't want to change their behaviours because it's an electric vehicle. And that's really an, the next important step. We can make the cars we can give them the right kind of attributes, but have we got the infrastructure to support them and enable those to be sold in sufficient volume to bring the price down? So it will be a virtuous circle if we get it right, but it won't be unless we address the infrastructure very seriously. Uh, we're aiming uh, to deliver a report uh, sometime in, uh, in the next summer, so summer of 2019. Uh, there are things that could go wrong and there are obviously some things that are going to happen between now and then, uh, but that's the plan right now. 
So uh, we're gearing up to uh, uh, getting our thinking sort of lined up and straight uh, in the sort of first quarter, calendar quarter of next year, uh, prior to doing the, the finishing touches to deliver a report uh, June time, there or thereabouts.